Hello, just Jamie here. Have you recently installed Duck Station and you want better performance, better visuals? If so, you have come to the right video. I'm going to be showing you how to install Duck Station, how to configure your controller, and crucially, how to upgrade and upscale your visuals to give you more of a modern look to your old PS1 games. So on screen, you can see right now a really old look. And if you continue watching this video, you will see an upgrade with performance. If this is for you, check this video out and I'm going to show you how to achieve this on your own computer. Hello, just Jamie here. Thanks for checking out my latest emulation video. So before I start this video, I just want to say thanks for watching it and uh, thanks for all my subscribers, you know, tuning in to watch my latest emulation videos. I do a range of different videos on my channel, music, tuition, obviously emulation, tuition, gameplay and modern games, so everything. So I need your support to upgrade the channel, as it were. I need new microphones, I need new backdrops, I can't keep going on using this. So I need a lot of stuff to enhance my channel to make it so much better. But anyway, uh, check out links in my description and enjoy the video. Take care. Okay, so now that plead is over with, let's get on with this video. So first things first, you're going to need something quite chunky to upgrade to upscale Duck Station on your Windows PC. I recommend a GPU with at least 4 gigabyte of VRAM, and obviously the more cores, the better. So, uh, like I say, let's get on with this. So first things first, link is in my description for this. You're going to head over to duckstation.org, and we're going to download this. So uh, this is also available on Android. I'm going to go for the Windows version and I'm going to download Duck. Now you might require the VC runtime files. So if you don't have those installed, then install them first. I'm not going to do that. I've already got them. So I'm going to just download Duck. And this is going to download you a zipped folder. So once we got this zip folder downloaded, all you're going to do is just, I'm going to drag this onto my desktop. Just uh, close this down for now. And let's see what's inside DuckStation. So you have various files here and a couple, well, a few subfolders. I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop. So I'm going to right click, go to new, and I'm going to select folder. I'm going to rename this PS1. So once we're in there, I'm going to just highlight all of the contents inside of that zipped folder we just downloaded, and I'm going to just drag and drop into my newly created PS1 folder, and just wait for that to transfer. Good, good, good. So let's just close this down, and we no longer need this zipped folder. And I'm going to go ahead and open up PS1 folder I've just made, and first things first, I'm going to open up the Duck Station application. And what this is asking you to do initially is to set up a directory where DuckStation can find your games. I've got one game on my desktop, which is Crash Bandicoot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just add game directory. I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to desktop. And if I just go to Crash Bandicoot for now, obviously, if you've got several PS1 games, then you put them into a PS1 folder with all your game folders inside of that folder. But like I say, just for this tutorial, I'm going to select this folder because it's the only game I've got. So let's just select this. And it's going to ask us to do a scan. So I'm going to just press yes, and it's going to scan all subdirectories. And like I say, if you've got more than one game, maybe you've got a ton of games, uh, always press yes on this one. And there we go, so straight away it scanned it and it didn't take too long, seconds, half a second. So we've got this now in our directory. So, okay, so once you've successfully scanned your games directory, you will get your game or games on your list on DuckStation. So let's try and boot this up. But I forgot, you can't do this yet. You're gonna to need to put your BIOS files into the right directory. So to do this, all you're going to do is go to Settings, BIOS, and what you're going to do here is under the BIOS directory, you're going to locate where your BIOS files are stored on your computer. So make sure you've extracted them from your real PS1 console or wherever you choose to get these BIOS files from. And that's about it. So mine's all set up and ready to go. 
Next thing you're going to want to do is to set up your controller. So if we go back to settings, and if we just go down to controllers, this looks pretty daunting, but it really isn't that bad. So what we're going to do here is just go to controller port one as I'm playing as a one player. And if I go to this section here where it says analog controller, I can emulate what type of PS1 controller, PlayStation 1 controller I like. So I'm going to just go and select the analog controller. So the next part is going to take you a little while, but it's very easy to do. So if you see d pads just here and you've got your PlayStation controller plugged in or whatever controller you're going to be using for this, just press on this and just press up on your D-pad, left on your D-pad, right on the D-pad, down on the D-pad. Left analog is obviously your left analog on here. And right and down and so on and so forth until you've fully completed all of your settings which corresponds with your controller you're using. So very simple stuff. So once that's done, all we can do now is just close this down. Next thing you're going to want to do is actually upgrade your graphics. So if we start Crash Bandicoot, so if we check the bottom of the screen here, you can see this has been displayed in 512 by 224. Uh, which is pretty bad this is going to be very very pixelated and of course the reason you're watching this video is to learn how to make these games look a hell of a lot better so let's just start this and let's get the gameplay rolling so yeah not great just your average ps1 game the way they used to look back in the day but let's check this out, how to make this look a hell of a lot better then. So if we go back to settings, if we firstly go to display, and you can do this in real time. So the first thing you're going to see is render. So, so by default, this has selected DirectX 11. I'm recommending to you to use hardware Vulkan. Most games work perfectly fine with Vulkan. And like I said, we can play this in real time so we can check out our enhancements as we're playing. Next thing to do, if you're using Vulkan, your adapter, just leave this one as default. Don't change this to your GPU. And we next got the option to V-Sync. So V-Sync means if you check this, screen tear will be eliminated. So always check V-Sync and it's not very draining on your computer. Next part we got is aspect ratio. So this is automatically doing this as native. So this is four by three. But if you want 16 by 9, just go down to 16 by 9, which will give us more of a stretched image, as you can see. So obviously the PS1 games wasn't designed for this type of ratio. So that's entirely up to you, your preference. Personally, I'm going to stick with 4 by 3. Next thing you're going to want to do, it's part of this, is linear upscaling. So if we uncheck this and you can see the visuals right now, you can see Crash is very pixelated. If we check this, you'll see there's more of a blur. So again, that's entirely up to you. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to enhancements. Once we're here, internal resolution is at one times. I'm gonna bump this up for this video for 1080p. And Duck Station is now gonna compile pipelines and already we can see there's a massive improvement in textures and how it looks. Let's bump this up once more and we're gonna to go to 4K. Now, for this video which I'm using, this software I'm using to record this, it might not show a dramatic performance, but I can assure you it's running really fluidly. But I'm gonna just go back to 1080p. Now, when you're playing some PS1 games such as this one, you might notice like a bubble type look to it in certain places it looks a bit bouncy so to get rid of this if we just go down to geometry correction and check that and again we're going to go to compiling pipelines which is all good and make sure cooling correction is also checked perspective correct textures it's also checked preserve projection precision is checked 
and we're also going to check perspective correct colors and again it's going to compile okie doke so we now have this on 1080p and it's looking really good so if you want a monitor see how fast this is running if we just check show fps you will see at the top right screen your fps which is looking really good obviously if you've got a more chunkier beefier computer then you're gonna want to bump this up to 4k okay hey, lastly to get the full experience of this if we just go to the general tab i'm gonna click here start full screen and if we keep this one checked just here double click toggles full screen which means once you're in full screen mode if you double left click on the screen you'll go back to your windowed mode so if i just go to close Okay, so that's about it for this tutorial. So in this, I've showed you how to configure your settings to give you the best optimal performance for your computer you're using. Obviously, if you want 4K, you're gonna need something beefy and chunky to run it in 4K resolution. I've also showed you how to set up your controller, and I've generally showed you how to play a game which needs to be in docu.bin format. So until next time, I hope you enjoyed this video and take care.